Hello and welcome to another film about the effect of pressure changes on equilibrium systems. We've looked at the practical side of things, we've looked at the principles that are involved, so it's now time to look at the graphs that we'll see and as before we're going to look at the rate time and concentration time graphs for equilibrium systems that are this time subjected to changes in pressure. Okay so here we go. Um, we're going to start off by increasing the pressure and we're going to do this by reducing the size of the container. Okay, So we're, whatever box this reaction is happening in, we're compressing it, making it smaller so that everything's happening in a smaller space. Okay, let's imagine a reaction system where A turns into 2B in the forward process and in the backward process 2B is turning back into A. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the rate time graph, okay? Um, we've got the two rates at equal levels, although they don't look very equal there. Um, they're supposed to be equal because the system is at equilibrium. What's going to happen when we increase the pressure? Well, the forward reaction is going to speed up because there's more particles per unit volume, so the chances of A particles colliding is increasing and the forward reaction rate is going to speed up. But so is the backward reaction rate for exactly the same reason because there's a greater number of particles per unit volume and so the chances of B particles colliding increases so the backward rate increases. So the question is which of these rates is going to speed up the most? Well remember Le Chatelier's principle says that this system is going to try and lower the pressure because we've increased it. How does this system do that? It goes to the side with the fewest moles of gas. I should have state symbols here just to indicate that what I'm intending here is for all these things to be gases. Okay, so one mole of gas on the left, two moles of gas on the right. This system is going to go to the left to decrease the pressure. And so the backward reaction has to be favoured. Okay, so the backward reaction is going to increase in rate by more than the forward reaction. Okay, but then as usual, they're going to come back together and meet at a level around about halfway between the two heights that they got to and when they equal each other and they carry on at the same height as one another the system is back at equilibrium. Okay let's see what will happen to concentrations here. Now I'm just going to start at arbitrary levels again but I'm starting at low levels because I know I'm increasing the pressure so the concentrations are going to increase here. Okay I'm going to reduce the size of the container. So, well, how much by? Okay, well, let's say I've halved the size of the container. What's going to happen to the concentration of these two things? Well, remember that concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume. So if I um, halve the volume, then the concentrations are both going to double. Okay, so both these concentrations are going to increase by the same factor. Okay, so this one's going to go up by about seven squares. And this one's going to go up by about three squares. Okay, I haven't done that particularly accurately, um, but the idea being here that they've both doubled in concentration because the volume halved. What's going to happen to these two concentrations as the system returns to equilibrium? Well, remember, Le Chatelier's principle says we're going to the left here to try and reduce the pressure. So the concentration of A is going to keep increasing and the concentration of B is going to fall. The concentration of B isn't allowed to go back below its original level, so let's just have it going down to there. We've got a mole ratio here again, so B has fallen by three or four squares here. So because there's two moles of B and only one of A, then A, which will increase, will only be able to increase by about two squares. And then when they level off again, then the system is back at equilibrium because the concentrations are constant. Okay, let's have a look at the opposite change, so a decrease in pressure. So this time we've made the container bigger. Okay, um, I can't deal with a reaction where A is turning into B because then there won't be any change in the position of equilibrium. I suppose I could show that on these graphs but I'm going to deal with one that does change. So this time let's go for, I don't know, 2A turning into um, 3B in the forward direction, okay? And 3B turning back into 2A in the backward process. 
Okay, so rates starting off at the same height as one another because the system is at equilibrium. Okay, what's going to happen here? If I decrease the pressure, there's fewer particles per unit volume, so the chances of collisions falls, so the forward reaction slows down, and so does the backward reaction. So both these rates are going to fall. Which one's going to fall the most? Well, Le Chatelier says this system's going to try and increase the pressure because we've decreased it. Where are the most moles of gas? Over here on the right. So this system has to move in the forward direction to obey Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? So the forward reaction is going to be favoured. That means it's going to fall, but it's not going to fall by as much as the backward one. Okay? And then as they return to equilibrium, the backward one speeds up because the forward one is producing more products. Okay? And as those A's get used up, the forward reaction is going to slow down and they're going to get to the same height again and the system is going to reach equilibrium. Let's have a look at the concentrations. This time I'm going to start high because they're going to fall as I decrease the pressure. Okay, arbitrary levels again, but they're going to fall by the same factor because, well, let's say I doubled the size of the box, then the concentration of A is going to halve, right? So volume is halved and the concentration of B is going to fall to about half its original value. So they both fall by the same factor. Okay, not by the same amount, but by the same factor. What are they going to do now as they head towards equilibrium? Remember, this is at the moment the change is made, not when the system's going back to equilibrium. Well, again, this system is trying to increase the pressure. Let's just say they're both gases again, just for the sake of completeness. Okay, this system is trying to increase the pressure because we decreased it. It's going to go to the right. So the concentration of B is going to rise again, but it's not allowed to go back above its original level. You might have a better understanding of these things that I'm saying here with these levels when you come to study equilibrium constants. Don't worry about it too much for now. This line has risen by four squares, right? There's a mole ratio here of 3 to 2. It's a little bit awkward for me. So this is um, so this if this rise was 4, then this one is going to be 2 thirds of 4, which is what? 2 and 2 thirds? 2 and 2 thirds. So um, the green one, which is going to fall, is going to fall by about 2 thirds squares. Okay, so the mole ratio there is when they're returning to equilibrium. This initial change is when the change is made and they're both changing by the same factor. Here they're changing by a stoichiometric ratio. Okay, well that's it for pressure changes. We've got temperature changes and also another type of pressure change that is to do with noble gases to look at and also catalysts. Um, Remember, if you're getting confused with these things, it's vital that you ask questions because all these things in the equilibrium topic kind of link together and they all rely on one another. So if you've got questions, please do come and get some help as soon as you can.